What's up? I'm Hutch. And you need to understand how wounds heal so that you can tell when something's going wrong and then fix it. And also so you can pass the NPTE, so listen up. Now all wounds will heal with a little bit different progression, but they're typically categorized into primary, secondary, and tertiary intention. Wounds that heal with primary intention can be as deep as superficial partial thickness and tend to heal on their own without complication. We'll get into that a little more in a second. Wounds that heal with secondary intention can be as deep as full thickness and will require ongoing wound care to close, possibly including debridement of necrotic tissue. Tertiary intention is also known as delayed primary intention, and these wounds often have a risk for infection or dehiscence, which is when the wound splits open, and are left open on purpose until the risks are decreased and it can heal properly. Okay, back to healing by primary intention. This typically happens in three overlapping phases, inflammatory, proliferative, and maturation. The first part is hemostasis, aka stop the bleeding. This involves immediate vasoconstriction as well as platelet aggregation to form a scab over the wound. Once the bleeding issue has been managed, the vessels then dilate to bring in cells that will help clean up any debris or bacteria in the wound bed. The new inflow of blood will also bring cells that will replace this scab with collagen to form a scaffolding for new tissue. Epithelialization is when the wound is completely covered by skin, so that can happen either by bringing in the sides of the wound closer together until they touch, or by filling up the wound bed with granulation tissue. That's the red meaty stuff that you'll see in the deeper wounds. Now along with that new granulation tissue, there will also be a lot of new capillaries that form to bring in blood, oxygen, nutrients to that new tissue that's forming. When you look at a wound that has new granulation tissue, you'll want to note the color because if it's a little bit lighter pink, that might mean it's not getting enough blood flow. And if it has a yellowish film over the top, that's going to need to be debrided before that wound can fully heal. The collagen fibers will rearrange themselves into stronger patterns with more tensile strength. The red raised skin will then develop into a flat pale scar. Now if you have a traumatic wound like a burn, a lot of times you can have hypertrophic scarring which means that your body's just throwing down extra layers on top of that scar so it ends up being a lot more raised than it would normally be and it'll take about two years to heal instead of the normal four to eight weeks. If you're having trouble remembering any of this, think about a venous wound for example and think about how that wound originates and then what phases of healing might be delayed or even stopped because of the origin of that wound. Now it's time for NPT Jeopardy! Pause the video now if you want time to read and think about the question. Otherwise, you've got five, four, three, two, one. Surgical wounds that are well cared for and do not develop an infection will heal by primary intention. Hopefully that covers all the bases, but if you're still having trouble understanding this, you can always check out the link in the description box below to my notes on Etsy and you can drop me a comment or suggestion on things that I can do in the future to help you better prepare for the NPTE. Otherwise, good luck studying. Go change the world.